Frank, this last for me is out of a lifetime of habit. Where well, there is little doubt in my mind that you will never receive it. The streets I can see through the window of this dismal hole I inhabited are for all intents and purposes deserted now. Of course, we sent a last ditch plea for help. But there is no help. Even if there were, it would be too far off to do us any good. The barbarians have stormed yet another city, killing and destroying. The message was uh, intercepted. <laughs> the guy was killed about four blocks away, so... Uh, we've had it. Oh, man, it's chaos out there. Nobody knows who's in charge. No one's in charge. I mean, the guys are deserting right and left. You blame them, they're scared to death. We figure, uh... <laughs> we got an hour, maybe less. So, uh... The five of us will be down in my room, and, uh... We got a bottle. A couple of toasts to the old days, and... Families and friends. Look, man, it's a bad time to be alone, you know? It's ugly, Royce. Story of my life. <laughs> yeah, well, if you, you know, if you change your mind, uh, You're the best reporter I ever worked with, man. Frank, when I was a kid, I dreamt I had a mission. A private vision of a better world. There was no God that was obvious. Reason would have to serve. Reason would prevail. My reason. What a laugh. What love have I generated? Whom have I benefited? I leave this world the shambles I found in it. What puzzles me, though, Frank, is that through all the stupidity, the bombs, the mobs, the killings, all of it, I'm still here. I'm still alive. What do you think, Frank? Could it have been some great cosmic joke to show me what an ass I've been? No answers. I'm at the end of the line, Frank, and there are no answers. Poor Joanna. She deserves so much more. What good have I ever done her? There's so much I've never said to her. My life has been a waste of time, but I think I could die in peace if I could just say some of those things now. I don't want to die here. Not here. Not without seeing her once more. Whitaker Trilling. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Whitaker Trilling. I'm the only one ever. 
I'm not here. I can't really be here. Oh, yeah, but you are. It's a dream. Mm-hmm. But it's not your dream. Oh, whose dream is it? Yours? Joanna's. I see. Couldn't be, could it? That I'm here right now, my wife's dream? No. Roy! Breakfast! Roy! <laughs> she's dreaming she's cooking you breakfast. She's dreaming it? Mm-hmm. You're telling me that she's asleep? That's right. It's only 6.30. Well, where's she sleeping? Oh, uh, in your study. She sleeps there a lot. When you're not here, it's all she's got. Only I could come up with this madness. This is my dream. No, no, you're not asleep. I'm 5,000 miles away from here in a hotel room asleep. No, you're here. You mean to tell me that if someone were to go into that hotel room, I'd be gone? Absolutely. But no one will go into your hotel room. Nobody can. Why not? Because time has stopped for you. Which is very fortunate, because you have very little time left. I mean, the war stopped. Bullets in mid-flight. But here, time goes on? In her dream, there is no real time. Anything can happen in a dream. Does she know I'm in here? Of course, she's dreaming you here. That's why you're here. Wishing me here. That's right. Wishing doesn't make it so. Ah, well, usually. But this is a once. Listen, I'm doing something for her. She deserves something. What have you ever done for her? What do I do now? Do something you've never done in your whole life. Fulfill her dream. Uh, take into account you don't look your best. Honey? You know, I never thought I'd ever see this house again. This will be the last time. Love this room. Bacon and eggs due this morning? Just fine. Don't let it get cold. Just sit, sit, sit. It's been so long since you've touched her, she doesn't dream much of it anymore. No sense making her uncomfortable. Bacon! Bet they didn't have any of that in the jungle, huh? You've been in several. Just go with it, man. Thank you. <laughs> oh, poor Roy. You look awful. You need a shave. <laughs> oh, how gray your hair has gotten. Little streaks of silver. <laughs> I've gotten older. Yes, you have. <laughs> I saw it the last time. It frightened me. Every time you come home a little older. Oh, what would I do if there was no more you? Don't be frightened, Joe. I love you. Isn't that funny? I can't feel your touch. You know, I, I want to. I, I try to remember, but I just can't. I can't remember. I remember your face. Oh, I always remember your face. Especially your eyes. But your touch, I 
Just... <laughs> it's no use. Maybe it's because I'm... I want you so badly. Oh, God, there's so little time. Please let her feel. What do you want? Miracles? What do you mean, so little time? You're not going away again. Oh, no, no, not again. Same dream over and over. No, I'm not going away again. I promise I won't go away again. No, 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 no. No, don't promise. No, that's the kiss of death. No, don't, don't promise me you won't go away. Promise me you won't promise me. He's got to, Joe. Believe me, I wouldn't send him if it weren't absolutely necessary. But he's the only one who knows the area. He's not going. Joe. He promised me. Why is Kinsey here? It's her dream. Tell him, Roy. Tell your editor that you're not going. Go ahead, Roy. Tell him you're not going. Roy? Listen, Frank, I'm not going. You've got to go. Joe, he knows these muckamucks. He talks their language. He gets in to see them when nobody else can. He knows where the bodies are buried. Pick up the plane tickets and build a magazine. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm not going, Frank. I'm sorry, Joe. He doesn't really care anything about us. He never did. I don't know why we ever made him Kip's godfather. Maybe if he'd had children of his Listen, own, honey. maybe... They wanted children. Miriam died. I don't want to talk about it. It's not fair for you to think that. I don't want to talk about death. Where will we put it, ma'am? Oh! It's a ride! The love seat for your study. Uh, what do you think of it, Roy? She uh, decorated the house when you were in Saigon. Worried about that love seat for 11 months. You got home, never noticed it. Broke her heart. It's just perfect, honey. Oh, do you think so? I thought it would be perfect for the wall to the left of your desk. Hmm? Perfect. <laughs> um, the room at the bottom of the stairs. Yes, please. Oh, it is so good to have you home. I didn't want to decorate this house all by myself. Hey, what, what, what do you think of this old stove? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> hey. It reminds me of the one in that old farmhouse. You remember at Lake Winnipesaukee? Does it? Yeah, remember? How thrilled you were with that old relic? You know, it does look like it. We slept in front of it, remember? Hmm. Huh? You made love to me in front of it. Under that scuzzy old wolf blanket. <laughs> <laughs> you sneezing. <laughs> you, you chopped all the wood for it. And <laughs> that wouldn't burn? Asbestos wood? <laughs> My lumberjack. In that big old plaid mackinaw that we bought. You know, you know that's still up there in the attic, that old thing? Oh, those were good days. You know, I like this. I think we should keep it. I was such a baby. I'd married a man of the world. <laughs> and you, you were going to show me China. Introduce me to Chiang Kai-shek. Well, he died before I had the chance. Mm -hmm. But you would have liked it. Would I? Yeah. <laughs> he was a soldier, proud but vulnerable. You know, he thought he lost everything, but he never gave up hope. Mm. His wife, you don't like his wife. <laughs> hard as nails. Beautiful, but hard. A politician. Yeah, something like your wife, hmm? No, not really. Oh, you know, I really... I really did so want to go to China. And you went with Nixon to see the Great Wall. Well, that was years later. 
You went alone, alone to see the Great Wall. Oh, I was so jealous. Well, I wanted to take you. I really did. Why didn't you, Royce? But, you know, they didn't have any space. There were quotas. I know. Lie. You wanted to take Ruth. You didn't take Ruth, did you? Ruth? She knew, Royce. Did you, Roy? No, sweetheart. I didn't. And only because Ruth was in Paris on assignment. Yeah, I know. I know she didn't mean anything, really. You were lonely. But she's just so, so bright. I used to read her columns, and I, I'd fantasize. I saw her once. Mm, on Meet the Press. She was very impressive. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Cunningham. It wasn't Roy's fault. It was no one's fault. Joe, stop. I used to make her say all sorts of craziest things. I feel guilty as hell. <laughs> he, he quiets me. I think he needs me. We love each other. I never loved her. I never stopped loving you. Not for a moment. I believe you. She does too, you know. And forgives you. But you can't blame her for fantasizing now, can you? And it wasn't all that innocent, was it, oh, Mr. Truth and Reason? Nah, you never fooled her. Mom, what time is it? Kip? Yes. What's that? Mrs. Clark. It's Kip's ride. Wait a minute. Hurry, Kippy. Joe, stop. Trilling, wake her up. See you later, Mom. I'm late. Joe, stop. There's nothing you can do. Joe, he doesn't need a ride. I always took him to school. I'll take him. You were in London waiting for an airplane. She begged you to stay. You might have that time. Kinsey could have sent someone else. Unfair. Odd coming from you. You're punishing me. It's her dream. You're pushing the button. And never tamper with dreams. The box was so small, so pathetic. Joe. His whole class came. It was touching. And that fine mist never stopped. I told myself, you were sending your tears from a very long distance. We've already been through this once! Oh? You've only been through it once. Oh, Roy. I know how much you loved him. And oh, how he idolized you. Oh, his famous father. You were the great world that he grew up to see. Okay, I didn't have to go. Kinsey could have sent someone else. But I thought... She knew, Royce. She always knew. It wasn't your fault. Wasn't it? Look, I've been hanging around here for six months. I was beginning to get antsy. And Kinsey called and made that offer. I knew you'd spoken to him, pleaded with him. But I didn't want to be an editor. I know I told you I did, but I am a reporter. I am no editor. And that business happened with the shot, and I ran and left you alone. All right. You wanted to go, and you needed to go. I knew, I knew that. I knew at the minute we, we, we heard that he had left with his family, and we saw how sick he looked. And they were rioting. I, I watched you glued to the set. He could have sent someone else. Well, probably. But I knew in your mind you had to go, that it was your story. And it was. It was your story. Joe, don't protect me. Protect you? I'd give my life for you. If you'd ever have needed it. Yeah, that's what always killed me. You've never really needed it. 
needed it your life? I couldn't go on without it. Oh, no, 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 no. That is a very dear lie that you've always told me and always told yourself. You are my only reason for living. Shh, listen, listen. Now, we're both getting older. It is time we face the truth with each other. Your work is your reason for living. You've said it. You're a reporter. And the best. The best. I mean, you, you tell what's happened, the important things that people have to know and understand. I've never been emotionally involved with any of it. Well, you're not an emotional man. That's not true! Oh, yes, it is. I mean, you've never been emotionally involved with anything or anyone. More's the pity. Oh, look, if I would have wanted it otherwise, of course. I mean, of course I would. Joe. I, mean, I had to read about your life with all those strangers. But, but I married a reporter. I knew it in front. An observer of life who has seen the truth and stated it plain. That's what made you such a success. A success? Do you doubt that? Oh, darling, there's only one of you. For years, you've been the eyes of everyone who's afraid to see. You've, you've been a light in the darkness. Do you believe that? Believe? I know it. I know it with this, with this life that I've lived. Waiting for you. <gasps> Dreaming you safe. I've always dreamed you safe. It's as if, as if someone always heard me. As if someone always heard my dreams. Made them come true. You owe her more than you know, Pulitzer Prize winner. She's a very special lady. I guess I've missed a lot. We have missed a lot. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it much differently. Kiss her one last time. About to waken. There must never be a last kiss. Not as long as I'm alive, dear. Please. The dream. The dream is almost over. <laughs> you, know, you know what you haven't done for me in a long, long time. What's that? Write me a love letter. <laughs> oh, write me one, Roy. Please. Come on. Come on. Just the way you used to when we were kids. <laughs> you know, I still have them all. They're all in an old shoebox. <laughs> Please. Sure. <laughs> Can I bring you another cup of coffee? Please. Oh, it is so, so good to have you home.
Dear Joe, the oddest thing has just occurred. Given time to think about it, I'd probably come to the conclusion that it never happened. Yet I can even now smell the scent of your hair and feel the touch of your hand on mine. And know with more pain than I can ever express how much I've missed you. Oh, Joe. The only thing I ever did with my life of any real meaning was to love you. My sorrow, my shame, is that I never really let you know it. God, why is it that we find out the really important things too late?